Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us are happy to be here tonight? This is the night of uh, God's favor. God is going to be very specific in his blessings upon our life today. Can we begin to worship the name of the Lord and just bless his name for him being a wonderful father to us, a, a loving God indeed. Open your mouth and begin to thank him. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift hands in worship. Lord, we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift hands in worship. Lord, we praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Oh, there is no one else like you. We're going to take it one more time. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, we lift hands in worship. As we praise your holy name. Oh, you are great. Oh, yes. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. No one else like you. There is no one else like you. Oh. saw a video this evening a man that had a facial accident and they had to do several plastic surgery on him and so as soon as he came out from the hospital he showed the picture the video of the hospital and he said i just came out from this hospital and he said many of you may not understand what it means there are many people who are still back there they don't know when they are going to get out some will not get out and, and it spurred us to thank God for the breath we have. He was telling us, you, you want to you wanna do anything, you want to eat, thank God for it. You finish eating, thank God for it. You woke up, thank God for it. Everything we have, that you see a big bed that you can see sleep on, or a small one, that you find a place to lay your head, just say thank you, Lord. Can we open our mouth this evening and say thank you, Lord? For all the things, for all the common things that we call common, that we are taking for granted the breath in us. Some people are trekking. They don't have a car. Some of you, you have two. Some people don't have many things. They are even afraid of sleeping. Why not open your mouth and say, Father, we thank you this evening. Thank you. Maybe you are the comfort of your home or you are at work, wherever you are, or you are here. Thank God. Just think deep and thank him for your being. Thank him for who he is. 
And let's begin to ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Even as we confess our sin to say, Lord, today we ask that you purge us. That Lord, anything that will be an impediment in our standing before you today, please forgive. Father, we come before you for cleansing. We come for your touch. We come for your redemptive power. We have come to have an encounter. Another person wrote on Facebook, he said, he said people fellowship, he said people don't fellowship with God, but they fellowship with themselves discussing God. Does that make sense? People don't fellowship with God. They fellowship with themselves discussing God. So that means that's not what it's supposed to be. We are supposed to come here to fellowship with God. God is supposed to give us an encounter. He's supposed to speak to me. He's supposed to speak to you. He's supposed to touch you. He's supposed to touch me. So let's pray to God whatsoever that we make our gathering to just be a mere gathering of people. Let it not be our portion. We pray that the Lord will speak to us. That the Lord will give us an encounter. Tell yourself that Lord I will meet with you today. You will meet with me today. Whatsoever that will be an hindrance, Lord, you will take it away in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray that this environment will be sanitized with the blood of Jesus. Let's command the presence of God. The Bible said, and the power of the Lord was there to heal. Let us pray that the power of the Lord will be present to deliver, to heal, to promote, to take away burdens in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that as many that are come here with burdens today, the Lord will give them an encounter. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Yes, we bow. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Can you join me to sing? We bow down. We Yes, we bow down. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Glory to Jesus, Yahweh. the clap offering as we invite the choir to lead us. Hallelujah. Please, if you are watching us online or you are here, share this program. Share, share, share. If you are watching us, invite your friends and you to share. Let somebody be part of today's blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory.
worship his holy name. Let's thank him. Let's thank him for all he's been doing for us. It's the midweek. We thank you for all his mercies upon us. We have not gone into any accident. We thank you, Lord Jesus. It's not by our power, it's not by our might, it's by the grace of the Lord. <laughs>
patience of days as old as you are as old as you are you will never change patience of days as old Yeah. 
exciting moment. Anytime we are always in the presence of God, it's always exciting. I don't know about you, but to me, anytime I, I'm always in the presence of worshiping God, it is something glad. It's something I'm always glad to do from the bottom of my heart. So I want to welcome all of you here today for being the service today. Um, so at this point, we're going to be calling for testimonies. So we really appreciate anybody that have a testimony to give today. Okay. I see somebody raising up hands. So that's number one. Okay. Okay. Number one. Do we have a number two? Okay. Number two. Okay. Do we have a number three? So we have a number three. Okay, number three. Okay, I think we're going to take one more. Do you have a number four? Any number four? It's always a marvelous thing. This time you give God appreciation for all he has done for you, for all his goodness and mercies. It's always a wonderful thing to do that. Number four? Okay, we got number four. So at this point, we want to call on number one to come give a testimony. Can we give him, can we give her a round of applause? Um, good evening, church. I just want to give thanks to God. Um, my grandson, less than just about two years old, had a surgery this morning. Um, and um, the report is that everything went well. So please thank God for answered prayers. Thank you very much, Mommy. We don't know what God does for us anytime we go to some some medical some medical procedures. We don't know what God has done for us. We always think it's just easy. But I want to tell you it's not easy. No matter the simplest um, procedure. Any doctor can perform. Anything can go wrong. It can go wrong because I've seen that. There was some time ago, I worked in the medical field somewhere in Arizona. I've seen, you know, you just see, just a small thing they say they want to do. At this point, you just see them coming out so sad. What happened? Something went wrong. So it's not easy. It looks easy, but I want to tell you it's not easy. No matter, no matter how. They can just do any little thing, and before you know it, there's just going to be an infection in that particular spot. At that point, are you going to say they didn't do that job? They did that job, but for some reason, infection just came up. So, and that could lead to something else. So it's always something great anytime we, we, are, we have a successful procedure done. So anytime we, anytime we go through such things and everything goes on well, it's not just easy. It's, just, it's not just ordinary. It is by the grace of God. Thank you. So number two. Yes, number two. Should be number two, right? Do you? Oh. Yes, and number two again. Oh. I was in front. Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> I was looking all the way at the back <laughs> because I saw my back before. Thank you. So she's going to be having a testimony. Praise the Lord. Today I had this test called WEN360 and um, I didn't grow much because I was on the same level and I dropped a little but I still passed. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for everything and um, it's kind of like the same test that Obama passed. I passed it too. You see, one, you know, that is just life, though. That is just life. You see some people saying, hey, you know, I didn't do well. Some people be saying I did well. So it's just, that's just life. So we always have to experience that in life. And um, we're going to pray that of our, our little daughter that is 
kind of sad that she didn't really do well. We're going to pray for her that God will help her to keep on doing well. Some, some other time, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, number four. Praise the Lord. Ah, why is everybody so quiet? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to stand here and thank the Lord for the breath of life. And I remember when Pastor says, when you come to church, you don't know if the next person is going to benefit from you. Just you smiling at them or saying hello. And um, I felt that last week. When I walked in, I was stopped and I was like, who am I? But at the end of the day, somebody's life got touched. I got touched. And I want us to take time to reflect and be thankful for going out and coming in because a lot is happening that we don't see. I'm grateful for family. I'm grateful for friends, my faith. Grateful for finances. That's another one. And uh, please, let's not lose focus. It's very, very important that our eyes are on the prize, and it's Jesus. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have a number five, but um, I would like to add to what she just, what she just um, talked about. You know, as simple as it is, just saying hi alone to somebody beside you could go a long way. We might not we might just say oh it just it doesn't matter it doesn't matter but I'm telling you people are going through a lot of things I believe it is the it is the spirit of God that ministered to the to uh, that ministered the man of God to say that because I know he has never said that before yeah but that is the first time I'm hearing him preaching that hey somebody beside you just say hi to him it's not gonna it's not gonna cost you anything I want to tell you it's it's it's, it's as cheap are just saying hi. And that hi alone could just put a smile on somebody's face. Probably all, 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 maybe, maybe all the way, all through the night, you have, the person, he or she, has been having a bad day. But coming to church alone and seeing somebody talking to him, uh, him or her, saying, hey, how are you? How are you doing today? How's, it goes a long way. It goes a long way. I could tell you that. So I, I really appreciate God for your life, Murray. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. Uh, my own testimony is just very simple. You know, I've always wanted to come to Wednesday's uh, service. But I know that each time I come back from work, because I work, I work Monday, to, you know, Monday to Friday, I um, get a little bit tired. And once I take my bed and my back touches the bed. But uh, today, what happened was that I came back. I said, ah, let me... To be very frank, I don't know why I'm here today. <laughs> I, just, I just dressed up and told my wife, I said, I'm going to church. She said, okay. <laughs> I, told my wife, I told my children, I said, I'm, let me go to church. And I found myself here. When I came, I was like, okay. <laughs> I said, to God be the glory. So that's my own testimony. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The devil is always a liar. Most times, it's time, we are, we are all corporate. I'm a corporate. Everybody, I believe a lot of people here are all, you know, you know they are all corporate. Because, um, you know how you just get home? Devil just blow your breeze. Your bed will just tell you, <laughs> come, just just come right here. And before you know it, you sit on the bed, just say, let me just stay a little bit. And before you know it, that's it. You're just tired. Once the moment you get home, take off your shoes, take off your clothes. I'm telling you, some kind of wind, <laughs> some kind of serious wind will just blow. And before you know it, you just sit down on the couch, sit down on the couch. From there, you're doing something else you don't even know. As he said, he doesn't even know why he's here. That's it. You just sit down and you just start doing something you don't even know. You can't even explain what you are even doing. So I want to appreciate 
God, um, I appreciate our daddy for that testimony today. It's, it is an encouragement to every one of us to like always tell the devil, devil, hey, you ain't going to get me today. Devil, you ain't going to get me today. Always, you know. So it's always an encouragement to everybody. So thank you very much. So um, at this point, we're going to be calling our, our canon to come... Um, Come give us the word of God for today. Can we give him a round of applause? Can we give him a round of applause? It's not easy. Eh? It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to believe that we're clapping to Jesus. Thank you so much, sir. Praise the Lord. So if we're clapping for Jesus, let's clap for him very well. Amen. Can we stand up to worship God one more time? We started this prayer meeting with, I saw a video of a young man who came out, not young, maybe in his 50s. He came out from an hospital. He has a face surgery. There's something like a plastic on his face. So when he's talking, the upper part of his lip is plastic, but the lower part is. And he said, I just got out from this hospital. And he said, you guys didn't get it. Some people are there. They are here to get out. Some will not get out. He said, so every little thing that we experience, we should thank God for life. We are still breathing. And for the opportunity, you have to draw closer to God. Thank God. Did you eat? Finish eating? Thank him for the food. Some ate and they died. Uh, some don't even have the food. Some have the food. The appetite is not there. Some have the appetite. Food, no day. A lot of things to thank God for. You went to your work. You came back. I want to tell you some people were on their way to work. They had accident. You just came back until maybe you came back. You didn't get any ticket. Uh, nearly all of us go over the speed limit. You do and get back home. Nothing happened. Do you think police didn't see you? Sometimes they see you. Something then just said, leave that guy alone. We thank God for that. So can we just lift up our voices and thank that God this evening? You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are Jehovah. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are Jehovah. Let your name be exalted. You are our Redeemer. Let your name be praised forever. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done in our church. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the thing. In our family, thank you, thank, thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, everything you have. Father, we are grateful. We are here in your presence again. We pray that such a counter that we answer the devil on the question. Why are we here? Let it happen to us, O oh God. 
Lord, we may have some things in our hearts that we have come to ask. But there are some things we need that we don't know. And so, Lord, we pray that the Bible is saying that unto you the answers all prayer. And that you that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than what we can ask or imagine. Let that power minister to us this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's clap for Jesus one more time. Thank you. Um, officer, thank you. You know, when I asked him to lead, the way he was looking at me, he was like, let me stay in case. <laughs> he was like, me? But thank you so much. It's just that you use some military terms as you are talking. <laughs> so that's your area of feed. That's an officer. When you are saying culprit, when army officer catch you, you <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. That was wonderful. God bless you for it was. I didn't prepare him, and God used him. And to everybody that are here tonight, you are welcome. And I want you to know you are not an accident, or maybe you are listening online. God has a purpose for you. For Ganze that said honestly, I do. I, I love your sincerity, and. Uh, Sometimes, the Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So God brought you here. There are some encounters in life that we live to run like oil in our lamp all through our life. And uh, such may not be... I was home last Wednesday, right? I, I, I could imagine people watching us from home. What do they feel? It's not the same when you are here. Never, never the same. The ambience is never the same. Praise the Lord. So I want to welcome you to God's presence. We have continued over time to explore the power. Why did Jesus have to die and rise again? If it were just to be for him to come and carry the saints away or to forgive us our sins, I believe that he could have just said, your sins are forgiven. Number one, there are spiritual things that goes on about human beings that we do not understand. And until we get to heaven, we may not understand. We might be made to know some things because we know that if there's no, rem if there's no blood, there's no remission of sin. If God did not shed his blood. But why? Why must Christ shed his blood? We may not know. We just know some things happen. Or when the Bible says there was war in heaven, how can there be war in heaven? Those are the questions we ask from God. And why did God not throw the devil to mass where there's no human being? And he decided to throw him to the earth or take him to the sun, let him burn there. Why did he throw him? Those are the questions we ask. And just like we carry your child at the back of the car, and they, they, they can ask questions. Dad, where are you going? You answer them. If you are graceful to answer them, we are going to the mall. They will keep quiet for some time. They say, but Dad, why are we going to the mall? It will get to a point, you shout on them, can you just keep quiet and let's go to where we are going? Sometimes we behave like that to God, right? We as human beings, we behave like that. Many times we have questioned God on why would the sin of Adam be on us? If I were to be in the position of Adam, I would do better. So when I told my dad that, I shared testimony or the story, he said, a man was walking by the wayside, he got tired and was blaming God. Why, why did you create the world? And I'm suffering here. I have to walk till the ground to take care of my wife. And as he was complaining, boom, he just found himself in the palace. I believe this is a folk tale, but there's a story to learn from it. And so when he got there, he saw a king, and the king said, I want to treat you like a king. I'll give you all the rooms you need, but there's one room you shouldn't enter. So for several days and months, he was enjoying life, and he had a feeling that this place belonged to him. After all, if somebody owns this place, they would have come to challenge me. Months, he was just roaming about, having access, eating whatever he wants to eat. One day, he now said, if I'm the one in charge of, what, what is in that room that I cannot open? What is hiding there? The door was not locked, or it was closed, but it was not locked. So as soon as he opened it, a rat came out from there. So the owner of the house came back. He didn't say anything. So he was now saying, well, uh, I just felt um, 
since you left this place for me, <laughs> that you don't be anything that is. And I felt that ah, why for several months this, this room is left on on touch on. I just open it. You open it. He said yes. Immediately he said yes. He found himself back at that same spot where he was cultivating by the roadside. And God told him, you have done worse than Adam did. Yoruba will say, Some of us, even as preachers, we preach some things, but when the reality gets to us, we might not even do what we preach for other people to do. Uh, hello, am I saying the truth? Yeah. It's easy to carry the Bible and say, yeah, you should do it. But when that thing comes, <laughs> when it comes on you, you now know that you need God even more than your church members do. We all need help. I stand there to confess that we all need help in all areas of life. The only advantage we have about this job is probably by the grace of God, we have some anointing upon us that is different. And I can tell you that. What, what the, the places that I can enter into, you may not enter there, not because I'm special, but because I'm of the person whose job I'm handling. Does that make sense to you? So we don't proud or pride in it to say, yes, you are director. No, in fact, you have to be more humble because God might put some of the things that will help you to grow in the hands of these people that you are pastoring. So why am I saying that? We all need help, and that's why we always come to pray to God. The second reason why we come to church or to pray is because we pray for what we think we need. But the things that we don't need in a place of prayer, just you praying, can trigger God or Jesus to use it as an impetus to talk to God. Praise the Lord. One, because of the problems that we don't know we may have, that we are going to have. So your prayers will accumulate and begin to work in advance towards the problem you are supposed to have. Just like Jesus prays for Peter when he did not know that he would face temptation. So you are not here just to pray, oh, I'm having problems in my work. If you're on your phone, please make sure you are doing the right thing. I'm seeing some of you on your phone. Make sure what you are seeing, when you show it to God, he won't condemn you. That's what I would say. I had the privilege of staying behind that camera, and I was zooming on each of the people from the choir stand to the members. You can imagine what they are doing. One of them, I click enter, and the thing showed. Yeah, you quickly do like this. You can't come to church. It, I face that temptation sometimes. I would just tell myself, no. Somebody sent a message from there. You go to Facebook, to Snapchat, to this. I don't have Snapchat, but to Instagram. And if you don't quickly caution yourself, you will drift, and your mind will not be here. That's part of the plan of the devil, to get you off what we are saying. So please, if you're on phone, make sure what you are doing is contributing to why we are here. Praise the Lord. So early in my ministry, I asked God, why do you want me to be a priest? And one of the things he told me is, go and tell the people who I am. Go and tell the people who I am. Let's open our Bible to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We're talking about Jesus, our Redeemer today. Jesus, our Redeemer. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We usually quote this scripture on Christmas Day. It says, for unto us, a child is what? Unto us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called what? Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His name shall be called that. When you see somebody bearing a name that does not resemble the identity, it brings a question. So I want to bring to your notice that Jesus Christ is not just a man in Galilee. Is who? Is a wonderful God. Do you know the meaning of wonderful? It's full of wonders. If he picks your life, he can make your life a wonder. Because what is called wonder is people have stereotyped your way of, of deliverance, your way of breakthrough. But God will decide to change it and take it through another course. That's who being wonderful is. He's a counselor. Many of us are in trouble today. In fact, about a week ago, I ran into a difficulty. 
And I was confused. I talked to my wife. She couldn't help me. I looked inward. I was empty. I prayed and I called one of my pastors. And uh, he said, God told him, that thing in my heart, that's what I should do. God can use prophet. He can use anybody. But his name is a counselor. Are you here today? Just like you will pay $100 an hour to go and see a counselor or 150 In fact, I have some people that I know, they collect $250 per hour just to cancel you. And what would they say? Let me tell you. They will throw questions to you. <laughs> just like a doctor, when you get to a doctor, a doctor does not use magic to detect what is wrong with you. How can I help you today? Then you start confessing. What do you feel? I feel pain. They will join. They will write pain down. Did you sometimes headache? Oh, yes. They will join. Okay. This sickness is, is likely to be this because once you have pain here and another pain is there, it could be joint pain and they diagnose you. How many people have been diagnosed in the wrong way that you don't know? There are people who have been given wrong medication and their kidney perforate. They will, you are the one that will give them the foundation of the diagnosis they will give to you. So now, let's look at it that if the Bible says Jesus is a counselor, if indeed he is a counselor, you go to him, I'm in this trouble. I need to counsel me. And he can do that through human being. That was the day I preached here. A lady came for the first time. Somebody invited her. After the service, she went and met that person that invited her. There is no way you have said my problem to this pastor. And the person was saying, no, I did not. So I have to call her and say, sister, God, I stand to say God. She said, from the beginning of the sermon to the end, you are saying, you are talking me directly. If human being through the spirit of God can do that, how much more the same owner of that spirit? His name is counselor. Are you depressed? Are you going through affliction of life? Are you confused? I'm introducing you to somebody. His name is Jesus. He's a counselor. Do you know that sometimes we want to help ourselves? We cannot help ourselves. We, we disappoint ourselves. We, we fail ourselves. But there's somebody that cannot fail. Let me tell you that you pray and it seems that God is no answer. That does not mean he's no answering. Sometimes his no might be a yes to your prayer. So you need to depend on him until we begin to practice it. There are situations where if my, 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 to my wife I have different names. If my wife said, Daddy told me, this is a caution. It's not that. Okay. <laughs> it's a caution. When he said, follow me, then that is coming from the heart of love. You understand what I'm saying? She called me, follow me. So, n- the way you call people and the name they bear signifies how you want them. You, you, the responsibility that is accorded with that name, that's what you are calling out from it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Do you know what that man is saying? I know you are the savior, but I'm seeing your brother. You live around us here. Please have mercy upon me. I'm not from afar. I know you. I know where you are from. So don't leave me alone. And people say, keep quiet. No, no, no. But the Bible says he kept shouting because he knew his name. That's what I'm saying. I know his name. I know his name. His name is Counselor. I know his name. If you hear your name anywhere that you are a stranger, what do you do? You turn back. If you call, the Bible says, as many that call upon the name, there's, a, there's an injunction there, call upon the name of Jesus, he will answer them. So he's a counselor. Hallelujah. He's a counselor. He's a mighty God. Your God is mighty. You are not serving a dead God. If somebody is bragging against you, all you need to tell them, I have a God you never fail. I have a God who never Hey, I have a God who never fail. Who never fail. Jesus never fail. Forevermore. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33 to 34. Jeremiah chapter 33. Please, I want you to pay attention. 
Sometimes when I'm preaching, it looks like I'm joking, but uh, please pay attention to what I'm saying. I will read from here. Verse 33. Jeremiah chapter 50 from verse 33. He said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel, or thus says the, the children of Israel were what? They were oppressed. They were oppressed, along with the children of Judah. All who took them captive have held them so fast, and they have refused to let them go. What did he say? But their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts, capital S. Officer, what's the number in the host? Sorry, I don't. They have battalion and those things. What's the host? How many are in the host? You have no idea. Okay. Huh? You don't do host in the, your. You are a naval officer, right? Okay. So I read in a place that gave us the description of uh, those that you call what they are. So the Lord of hosts is his name. He will thoroughly plead their case that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Their redeemer is strong. And I want to stem on that, that you need a stronger power to let you go from the hand that may hold you down. You need a stronger power. And so when we go back to that Isaiah chapter 9, they said another part of his name is what? Mighty God. Mighty God. Be, be God. Mighty God. Jesus Christ is a mighty God. When we have this understanding, some of our problems, some of our problems that gives us our attention will go away. Have I not told you if you believe, you see the glory of God? If you know who is talking to you, you will not request for another water. So when we know who we are serving, it changes our perspective. It changes our response to most of the problems that attack us. I have a brother. If anything hits him, you say, God understands. God, does God know? God understands. If God understands, he will minister help to us. So, there are many things that are fighting against us as Christians or as unbelievers that will make you come to God. The Bible says they that must come to God, they must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What are you seeking about God? Not only to get miracle, but for you to know that if you are on the lost side, you are on the winning side. He's a bigger and big God. There is nothing that can be compared with him. Uh, my son was arguing with me that the earth is flat, but the eclipse happened now. You saw something around, right? Something, and they, they can only be, the Bible says of his wisdom, the searching of his wisdom, there will be no end. You will begin to search for who this God is, but the eternity, the, the universe is so massive that you cannot know everything about it. Why did they have to pass through a path? And some people are seeing it in a different way. Some people see totally, he's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. He's a mighty God. The God you are serving is not limited to this earth you are. He's the controller of the universe. You know what universe means? You know how many billions of stars that we have. One star is bigger than the earth. That's, a God, that's what God is controlling. You are just, you are not even up to a pin drop when it comes to the matter that concerns God. So your issue cannot be too big for him to handle if he's handling the whole universe. Come on, we have a mighty God. That's his name. Mighty God, mighty God. Deuteronomy chapter 26 from verse 6 to 8. Amen. If you grow up and you don't make this noise for God, eh, I, will, I will arrest you. I will, I will go and meet your father. <laughs> you have to use this, your voice and noise to serve God. And you will do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I read from verse 6 before we pray. He said, he said, but the Egyptians mistreated us. There are some power that are mistreating us. The Egyptian mistreated us. And afflicted us. The Bible says, is anybody afflicted? Let him do what? Let him pray. And lay hands and lay hard bondage on us. Then, verse 7. We cried out to the Lord. 
we cried out to the Lord God of our Father. And the Lord did what? Heard our voice and look on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. So this is verse 8. That's where I want us to focus on. And the Lord brought us out forth. Brought us forth out of Egypt. With what? With a mighty hand. That's the first thing. With an outstretched hand. Let me tell you, if you think, I keep saying it, and I'm not apologetic about it. If you think some of your problems will be solved by you coming to church and doing like this. When you finish doing it, the devil will slap you. It goes beyond Sunday, Sunday Christianity to deal with the devil. Although it is the power of God that delivers us from his hand, but we have to have an understanding. It's not everything that God will do for you. He said, resist the devil. He did not say, I will resist the devil on your behalf. If you don't know how to resist the devil, just blowing his, his nose to you, you are gone. In fact, the moment he said, <laughs> you will, you will submerge yourself into that. You say, problem, come and carry me. I prefer to. But David, that knew the name of his God, he stood before Goliath. He said, you can come towards me. I know you might be big, but I'm bigger than you in the spirit. Because he that is in me is bigger than you. Somebody inside of you. I know you have a God that you are calling upon. But I am coming against you in the net. He did not say I'm coming against you in, in Jesus. He said I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. What he's saying there is that I know his name as a mighty God. He's a wonderful father. He's a counselor. He's a redeemer. The Bible says although the Egyptian had us bound. And they don't want us to go. He said, but with a mighty and strong and outstretched arm. And with great terribleness. Let's look at NIV version of that. If you have NIV version, please read for me. There's something he said there. That's verse 8. The Tarolum 26 verse 8. Anybody with NIV version? Anybody? NIV. Wow. Huh? Please, any microphone closer? Deuteronomy 26, verse mm-hmm. 8. Mm-hmm. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt mm-hmm. with a mighty hand uh-huh. and an outstretched arm uh-huh. with great terror and with, with great terror. That's what I'm looking for. He said terribleness, but he said with great terror. Until a higher power inflict terror into the kingdom of the one opposing you, they will not let you go. Until they see a higher power, until they begin to sacrifice their firstborn, until they begin to see blood in their water they cannot drink, they will not go. Yoruba will say, You know what that means? For you to get the seed out of palm kernel, you need to use force to hit it hard. But it is not by our power, it's not by strength, but by the Spirit of God. But you have backing of God when you need to strike those things. You go ahead, you have a backing. Hallelujah. And that consciousness that I have a very big God to do what he asked me to do in the right way, you are going to be victorious. That's his name. He's our redeemer. He's a counselor, mighty God. But you will know that some of the things that are holding you down this way needs to get out with a mighty hand. Is there addition to anything? You think by just reading something on the internet, you get out of it. You continue. That thing will leave. I'm telling that after 40 days of fasting, the devil came to Jesus. Ha! I believe that the fasting should keep the devil away. He waited until he finished fasting. Then he came. So we have finished Lent now. Many people will think the the fast will keep the it will come. It will come. But we can conquer with the name and the power of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So in another version, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, he said, His name shall be called Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God is with us. Do you have that consciousness? When you are alone, do you know that you are not alone? Stop fearing. I am not alone. When you walk through the waters and, and fire. 
you will never be afraid of the terror by the day. You will never be afraid for the valley of shadow of death because God is with me. That's his name. His name signifies his ability. He carries the identity of his name. Emmanuel, God with us. You are carrying God. The devil cannot, de cannot deal with you. I don't know. The problem we have is that consciousness. Do you think those who do this sham, I used to see them in Yaronkwaja, Lagos that time. They would put some things here. They would be using real cutlass. They would use that cutlass. They would just bring a paper. The thing would call. Then they put it on themselves, on their neck. They would be cutting it. Do you think they wake up to do it one day? Some of them, you face them, oh, one man in my village, you did the hand like you pour on the hand, you fell down. It may fail them, just like their power will fail. But sometimes they will be doing it, nothing will happen to them. There is a point which we should move from doubt to growing in faith that God can do everything for you. Let's be on our feet. God with us. Matthew chapter 28, verse 11 says, All power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. And in 1 Corinthians, he's making 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25. Jesus says he, he must reign until he put his enemy under a full stool. And he has done that. When he died and rose up, all the enemy of Jesus, they are under his foot. And in Ephesians chapter 2, this is the one we read and we close to pray. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 8. Let's project it. Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 4 to 8. I will read from the screen quickly. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 4. But God, can we read together? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loves us, great love, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. Go to verse 5. He said, and has raised us up together, right? And made us to sit in heavenly places where? In Christ. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ. For by grace, ye are saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. So this thing is saying that as Christ is glorified and you are in Christ, you are glorified with him. You are far above principalities and power. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody tonight? So that when you see the devil boomerang at you, you tell them you have made a mistake. So that we not put our hands into the devil. Yeah, yeah, please. I don't know what you are going through and it seems God is far. He's not far. His name is Emmanuel. I don't know what you are going through and it seems the hand is weak. It's not weak. His name is mighty God. Are you depressed and you think nobody can cancel you? It's because you are depending on man. As many that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Call upon him and say, Lord, you are a counselor. I need you to counsel me. I have your spirit in me. The Bible said there's a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Lord God Almighty giveth it understanding. That understanding is the counseling of God. You have a spirit inside of you that the inspiration, the spirit of God will give you understanding. Understanding. Pray to God. Begin to talk to him this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, I address every difficulties in my life. In the name of Jesus, I come against this problem in the name of the Lord. Begin to address those situations. Are you afraid? Are you afraid for future? Or do you think you are, you are non-entity? You are rejected? You are nobody? Begin to tell the devil he's a liar. I know the God I'm serving. He will never fail. He doesn't disappoint. Open your mouth and pray, brethren. You know all these things. Pray to God. That the Lord will bring the consciousness of who he is to you when you face difficulties in life. That you will not falter. It, it may be weakening when we are faced with serious problems. But when we remember, he said, I will remember the name of the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> it's in the Bible. I will remember his name. I will remember his name. Lord, your name is Jehovah Jireh. You are a provider. I don't know what is relevant to your problem and situation. Or you are moving in a circle. He spoke to the children of Israel. Tell them to move forward. You begin to say, I move forward in life. I refuse to be stagnant. I refuse to be under the terror. Whatever that is holding me down, that will not let me go. Father, by your mighty and outstretched hands, O oh God, let it begin to perform wonders in my life. In the name of Jesus, let it begin to perform wonders. In the name of Jesus, pray for yourself. Pray for your wife. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. 
that the mighty hand of God will begin to perform wonders in their life. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Father, we want your manifestation. Lord, let this attribute of your name be seen upon me. Let that name perform wonder in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God, they say your name is Redeemer. You are strong. You are strong. You are strong. You are strong. In the name of Jesus, you are strong. You are strong. You are a mighty Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Your amen is weak. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 26. Thank you, children, for yelling out that amen. The Lord will answer your prayers in Jesus' name. You know, when I see children like this, I pity them because they don't, there are problems in life. They will see face. They don't know. So we need to pray for them. Yeah, you are laughing. I saw a video today. I think it was my wife that sent it to me. One lady was saying that if they want to attack a child of God, there are a lot of things they do. They conjure you before they approach you in the spirit. Especially those who are having sex anyhow around. It's more than, the Bible even says that he that joins himself with an lot has become one flesh. God who created from the beginning, understand what DNA means. If scientists can use DNA to catch people, just by touching something, they can trace your DNA. How much more when you sleep on a woman? Your sweat, everything, your body is going inside somebody you do not know. And she said, after they do that, they will go into their coffin. That and DNA, they will bring it out and analyze spiritually everything. Some people who call themselves pastor, who are actually calling pastor, but they can't, they don't pray. Why they don't attack many of them? They said either their wife is praying for them or their mother has been the one pray for them. You can depend on those people, but the day those people are tired, they will catch you. The day somebody who is praying for you is tired and she sleep off, maybe that day they will attack you. But you need to be strong yourself. The Bible says pray so that you don't fall into temptation. Temptation will lead to problem. From temptation, there will be sin. From sin, it will give birth to death. So you are going to pray. Father, the Bible says with an outstretched arm, with a mighty hand. Let that mighty hand begin to perform wonders in my life. Every area that you need to yank me off. Every situation you need to yank me and my family from. Every power that is exerting their forces on me. I stand on top because I belong to Jesus. I exercise this authority. I proclaim him. The Bible says we overcome the devil by the lamb, by the blood of the lamb, and by the words of our testimony. Our testimony is that we have the mighty God on our side. Begin to pray, brethren, as we round up. Begin to pray. Pray to God. Speak. Pray. Jesus, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I, I believe you have your Bible with you. The Bible says, with outstretched and with great terror and with signs and wonders, I want you to pray that the happening, the terrible things in righteousness that must happen. In fact, let me tell you, I don't pray for people to die, but there are some people that need to die for some people to move forward. And the only way they can die is when God wrought his terror. He has shown in the book of, of Exodus how they were, in fact, until Herod, warm, ate him up, the children of uh, the apostles were not released. They were terror. They prayed and warm ate him alive. I want to tell you, God owns life. But sometimes he said, life will be exchanged for you. For you to live, some people have to die. It's in the Bible. Though we don't pray for sinners to die, but some sinners have to die for life to continue. Do you understand what I'm saying? It may not be in our hand to choose who die. But I want you to pray tonight. Whatever institution that must die for me to move forward. Father, you institute it. Call upon me. Say, command me concerning the work of my hand. As many people that are adamant, they refuse to change. They have constituted themselves a terror. Father, let there be a terror in their place. Father, let there be a terror in their tent, oh God. Those who are living peacefully at the detriment of my own peace, Father. Visit them with trouble so that they will know that there is God. The plague that needs to befall them so that they will know you are a bigger God. Let it begin to happen. The terror you wrought to bring the children of Israel out. Let it happen in the tent of my enemy so that I will be let out in the name of Jesus. The signs and wonders that needs to happen according to your word. Let it begin to happen in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Let it begin to happen in my family. Let it begin to happen upon my children. Let it begin to happen in your church. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. 
And the Bible says in verse place 8, it said, verse 9, it said, He brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. I want you to pray that the Lord will take you to a place that is peaceful, a place that is flowing with milk and honey, a place that the Lord will establish you. Are you struggling in your place of job? Pray to God. Some, it will be difficult for you to, you are afraid that if you leave, you will not get a job. Pray to God that by his power, he will take you to a land of peace. The Lord will take you to a place flowing with milk and honey. You will never miss it in the name of Jesus Christ. By his mighty power, his light will shine on you and you will move forward. Let's remember to pray for any of our members that may be under the captivity. Let's intercede on their behalf. Their father, by the power in your name and in your hand, begin to take them out from the claws of the devil in the name of Jesus. The claws of the devil might be unbelief. Some people, they hear the word of God. It does not mute the faith. They live a life of righteousness, but they deny the power thereof. As many that are under the shackles and claws of the devil, Pray to God that the Lord will begin to deliver them. Some are in affliction of life. Some cannot even pray. We pray for them. Father, you will deliver them in the name of Jesus. Some are in the prison of Herod. Let that be a shake. Let that be a shaking. Let the foundation of people's prison begin to shake so that you will let them free. So that you will let them go and serve the Lord. So that they will get to their Canaan land in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. What is your concern? Can you bring them to God as we round up? Agbara Olorun po. Agbara Olorun po. O la na sori okun. O wo di Jericho. He's able. Abundantly able to deliver and to save. God is able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust. There's somebody that is having an upper respiratory, or what they call it, respiratory. Just help me out. So I know it, but it's not coming out the way I want. <laughs> yeah, in your upper body, you are feeling like you can't breathe. The Lord is sending healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. By the time you wake up tomorrow, those symptoms are gone. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Let's begin to commit every member of this church to God. We have that accident upon everybody. Let's pray. We have been praying this prayer since Thursday. We are going to pray it as we round up. We cover every member, anybody that is associated with this church. Nobody will die in any auto accident. Domestic accident, we exonerate them. When they drive, the protection of the Lord will be upon them. We refuse anybody into the hand of the devil. Those blood-tested demons will not locate any one of us. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that we should not be afraid of the terror that flies by day. Any accident, destined death. Father, we rebuke it upon our people. We pray for our children, Lord, that you begin to protect them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. Amen. As we go home, please write this down. Psalm 102, verse 13. Please let that be your prayer for this whole week. Before we come back next week, Psalm 102, verse 13. Offering time, please let our people, our young gushers, pass the background while we say our announcement. Um, we are contemplating to have a Bible study next, uh, like we used to do. Second Sunday is Bible study. So if anything changes, we'll let you guys know. Uh, to the family of PowerPoint prayer, you should belong to... Those who join us to pray tomorrow morning by 6. Uh, the pastor that will be leading us is Pastor Taiwo uh, from Uganda. So those of you who have sat on that administration, you know, is a man, humble man that God is using. And he has a prophetic anointing upon his life. So please, let's make it a date to meet CCM tomorrow. And if you don't have details, let me know. I will send them to you. Praise the Lord. 
And I want to say thank you here to people that have called to check on the progress on our birthday. Those who have reached out, I stand there to say thank you. I appreciate your prayer and the concern. The Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. So by this time next week, we're going to have the Holy Communion here. And thank you so much for all that you have done. Amen. Other announcements? Is there any announcements I'm missing? Okay, the youth and your adult, you had your meeting yesterday. A lot of decisions were made. Please reach out to on your page and be updated. It concerns every one of us. Amen. Let's be on our feet to pray. Once again, thank you for coming. And I believe you have been blessed tonight. Please don't be tired of praying to God. Um, thank you. All right. <laughs> Father, we thank you for our coming together to pray. Lord, the Bible says, Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We have looked unto your face and we have been transformed from glory to glory. We know, God, it is not in our words, but it is in your mercy. The Bible says, We don't know how to pray, but the Spirit intercedes for us with a groaning that cannot be uttered. Father, we pray tonight that you will intercede continually for us. As Jesus is in heaven that knows the deep things of God's mind and knows what we are thinking, even be, be beyond our own understanding of ourselves, that you present our case as may be most expedient for us, O oh God. Thank you, Father, because you are Father. We ask that you bless this offering of people and those that have given online, please bless them. And those of us that are here, let us go home to your abundant blessing. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we all share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Please, um, before we go, uh, I've noticed that when I just talk to people, that why, why don't you come to Wednesday program? They say, I don't know. Okay, will you come? And they start coming. It's as simple as like that. Please, next Sunday, those that you know that are supposed to be here, just approach them and let's see what God will do. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In the image of God was I created. And the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is within me. Nothing whatsoever can do me harm. Because God is protecting me. Go with this understanding and prosper in life in Jesus name. Thank you. Thank you for your time. God bless.